the first thing I want to talk about is passive devices. Now, passive devices are going to be like crowned pulleys, V returns. Um, there's some other kind of different manufacturers kind of make some different things. Here's the thing with passive devices, and you'll understand passive devices better after I talk about static devices in just a moment. But passive devices basically are just some equipment that you can add. Typically, they're very inexpensive, but typically they don't have a huge effect on the belt's trackability. So basically, they'll track the belt for a pretty short period of time. Now, they're not bad products if you don't have significant mistracking. But when you're dealing, let's say, with a crowned head pulley, there's other problems that can come about by using some of these passive devices. Uh, one of the concerns I have with uh, something like this is that if these rollers get built up with material, uh, they don't roll and they could damage the belt. This V roller puts a lot of stress on that belt that that belt may not be able to accept. And these head pulleys are really difficult to clean the belt when that belt doesn't have a, a, a nice flat edge to it. Um, so we're gonna talk about static devices here, which are a little bit more effective. All right, real quick here, static devices are um, uh, what we call dynamic devices uh, to help with belt tracking um, can be a little more effective. So what these devices do is they actually, uh, through these sensing rolls here and then just outside of this diagram, those sensing rolls will sense the belts mistracking or the belts wander. And then through linkage, that comes through here actually makes an adjustment to this roller, turns that roller according to that second wildly important statement that we mentioned earlier. And these units um, sense and react to the belt mistracking very, very quickly, and more importantly, very, very precisely. Okay, so these units can be much more effective than those passive units. Now they want to be strategically installed. And when I say strategically, I'm talking about um, where. And the first place that we would recommend is right before the belt goes into the tail pulley. Here's why that's so important. I want to send that belt into the tail pulley tracked properly. Because typically, after the belt leaves the tail pulley, that's where the belt's loaded. And I wanna make sure that belt's tracked properly once it accepts its load. Now, the other spot that I might install one of these units is at point B. And the reason for point B is because once I load the belt, that's where I have big opportunity for the belt to mistrack again because of either off-center or segregated loading. So the idea is once I load it, once this belt gets out of the settling zone and it continues on its path, before it continues on its path again, I've tracked it. The final place is C. Right before the belt goes to its discharge pulley. And the reason for that is because if my next conveyor down here is aligned with this conveyor, I'm sending my cargo off this head pulley centered onto this receiving belt, making this belt less likely to mistrack. So those are the three really strategic places that you want to consider putting one of uh, these dynamic tracking devices that can be pretty effective if put into these areas. Now, these things do still have some limitation. Usually, they'll only be real effective uh, for about 70 to 100 feet. So if I put a unit in, uh, let's say I put a unit in right here, and the belt's traveling this way, after about 150 feet, 
then that unit's really not doing us much good. So you want to space things out a little bit strategically as well.